It was September. I was happy, healthy. I did have ovarian cysts, and so my doctor put me on birth control pills, and I got really depressed. And four weeks later, bam, I was sitting in front of a psychiatrist. So the psychiatrist, Dr. Martin, he says to me, on a scale of one to 10, how sad are you? And I was thinking, oh my God, is this how this really works? You know, doesn't he need to know what I mean specifically by five for this to have any value? So I'm doing this calculation in my head and I'm thinking, okay, I don't want to be an eight because an eight's a crisis. I don't know if this is a crisis. And I don't want to be a three because I don't even think a three is serious enough to be at the psychiatrist in the first place. So I said, I'm a six, right down the middle. And then he said, on a scale of one to 10, how well are you sleeping? Seven. On a scale of one to 10, how likely are you to kill yourself? F four. On a scale of one to 10, on a scale of one to 10, 45 minutes go by and he says, I think it's clear that you're suffering from depression and I recommend that you start taking Paxil. It's an excellent medication. It's an antidepressant. It's gonna take a while to get the dose right but when we do, you are gonna feel this light come on inside you. So we were eating at Top Tim Thai, and my cousin Mike is telling this hilarious story, and I'm laughing, and all of a sudden, something happens to my hearing because the chopsticks at the other people's tables, they started banging together. And then their silverware was bouncing off their plates and I could see that Mike's mouth, it was still moving, but I couldn't hear what he was saying because the dishwasher in the kitchen had gotten really loud. It was going <laughs> And I felt this fear just grip my ankles and start rising up through my body. And I knew that we were all gonna die. We were all getting swallowed up by this sound. So I went back to Dr. Martin and I was telling him about the sound and also that I'm not sleeping and I'm nauseous all the time, and my joints are aching, and my rash is back. My rash wasn't actually there in that moment, so he was very skeptical about the rash. And also the fainting and the falling down and the panic. And he said, okay, Elizabeth, let's think this through. On a scale of one to 10, how sad are you? And I'm like, I don't have any idea how sad I am now because I have all this other shit going on. But I want to be a good patient. And I'm trying to give the right answer, and this seems to be the process. So I'm trying to embrace it. And I thought, okay, last time I was here, I was a six. I don't know if I'm feeling any better. I don't know. I guess I'm a seven, I said. And he said, I don't think the Paxil's working. I think that we should switch you to Celexa also a great medication, and the literature says it has fewer side effects. <sighs> Exercise. That's another thing that's terrific for depression. So I was out at Green Lake and I was going for a run. It wasn't really a run because at this point I'd been sort of reduced to kind of like a walk jogger, but I'm going around the lake and I'm picking up speed and all of a sudden I felt the hair on the back of my neck just stand straight up. And I turned around, and there was a guy following me. I mean, technically, Green Lake's a circle, but he was following me. <laughs> and so I started to pick up my pace, and I turned around again, and I could see that he had a gun in his jacket. And I knew he was gonna kill me, and so I start hauling ass, and I make it to my car, and I am trying to figure out what's going on, because I know, more certainly than I've ever known anything in my life that there was a guy following me around Green Lake with a gun. And at the same time, I know more certainly than I have ever known anything in my life that there was no guy following me around Green Lake with a gun. Five months. I've been having these weekly check-ins with Dr. Martin and uh, I just blurted out. I said, listen, man, 
some really strange things are happening in my apartment. There's a coffin in my kitchen sometimes, and this bloody girl keeps walking by my window, and I started hearing this, this static, this sort of like, like there's an AM radio playing somewhere in my apartment. And then this voice said, Elizabeth. And for weeks, I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. And then last night, he said, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, psst, Elizabeth. And I said, what? And he said, are you reading Crime and Punishment? And I said, oh my god, yeah, I am reading Crime and Punishment. And the psychiatrist said, OK, whoa. Uh, when you first came to see me, it was clear you were suffering from depression. But that's escalated to a major depression with psychotic features. And I recommend that you start taking Zyprexa. Zyprexa is an antipsychotic medication. And it's going to help you not engage with this voice. I'd been waiting for that light to come on for nine months. And I'd actually gotten really good at being sick. I mean, so good, in fact, that my bosses had let me come back to work. But right around this time, I developed this new symptom. My bones had started to vibrate. I mean, you couldn't see it on the outside, but inside, I felt this sort of like feeling. Like someone had taken a tuning fork to my bones and just gone like, bum, bum, bum. So it's one night I'm at work, and I'm trying to make a margarita, and I can't do it because of the feeling. So on a whim, I did a shot of tequila, and I felt better. And then a few minutes later, I did another shot of tequila, and I felt even better. And then I started to feel a little woozy, so I went into the bathroom, and I did a line of cocaine. And that was it. <laughs> that was the magic combination that turned the light on inside me. Antipsychotics, antidepressants, anti-anxiety meds, tequila, and cocaine. I was back behind the bar, I'm all aglow, everybody thinks I'm me. That cocktail, that cocktail worked very well for me, for a while. <laughs> and it was September again, and Dr. Martin had some very good news for me. There's a new antidepressant on the market called Lexapro, and it's better, so I switch. Now, I've been taking the Lexapro for about two weeks, and I start getting this headache. And it wasn't like any headache I'd ever had before. It was like <laughs> these monsters moved into my head, and they didn't like it in there. And so they started to rip the top of my skull apart. You know, every day, this ripping, ripping, ripping. And finally, it's Halloween, and I am desperately trying to be normal. And so I'm handing out candy to the little ghosties and goblins as they come to my door. And that's over, and I'm in my bedroom. And I don't know if it was the headache, or the year that I'd had, or this wave of violence that sort of swept over me. But I saw the brick wall fireplace in my bedroom, and I went, BAM! 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 That was how I chose to kill myself. So I ended up in the psych ward. Oh, here's a tip. If you find yourself in desperate circumstances on a Friday night and your people feel like you should go to the psych ward, do everything you can to wait till Monday. Because on Friday night, the real doctors, apparently they take off. And on the weekend, you just have the B team, these second string guys, and they're not allowed to make decisions about anything. Anyway, so <laughs> Monday comes, and I meet with my team, and they inform me that I have the wrong insurance for this hospital, and they kick me out. So my mom gets me on a plane, and I fly to Boston to be with her so she can figure out what's actually going on. She takes me to see six different doctors, and I got three totally different diagnoses. I got late-onset schizophrenia, major depression with psychotic features, 
and my favorite, bipolar 2, which as far as I can tell is an illness that just got completely made up for people who don't respond well to antidepressants. And <laughs> My mom's not buying it. You know, my mom doesn't think I'm crazy. I mean, she's known me my whole life. And also, she's got training. She's a psychotherapist. So she takes me to see this colleague of hers, a psychologist. And we're sitting in this woman's office. And my mom has to do all the talking, because at this point, I have the cognitive functioning of a potato. So my mom starts at the beginning, and she says, well, Elizabeth had ovarian cysts, and then depression, I mean, then birth control pills, followed by depression, and then Paxil, followed by rash, fainting, and panic attacks, and then Clonopin, followed by paranoia, and then Celexa, followed by insomnia, joint pain, cutting, hallucinations, and hearing voices, and then Zyprexa, followed by weight gain, restlessness, night terrors, and bone vibrating, and then the tequila cocaine cocktail, and then Wellbutrin, and then AA, and then Lexapro, followed by a headache, a suicide attempt, a hospitalization, the diagnosis of a partial complex seizure disorder, and the onset of bulimia. We've been talking for about three hours, and the psychologist, she leans forward in her chair and she says, Elizabeth, I don't think that you're crazy. I think that you're toxic. And I was like, what? What does that even mean? And she said, I think the medication that you've been taking to make you better is actually making you sick. I think the medication is poisoning you. And I was like, what? No, no way. No, I have spent the last 18 months completely investing in this idea that I'm a, a crazy loon, and now you're telling me that none of it needed to happen? None of it needed to happen. And she said, yes, that's the hypothesis that I'd like to work from for now. So, on the one hand, I have these experts, the psychiatrists, telling me that they're certain that I need this medicine or I'm going to hurt myself or someone else. And on the other hand, I've got my mom and this psychologist who aren't certain about anything, but think that there's a real chance that maybe this medicine's making me sick. So what do you think I did? Slowly, over months and months, I detoxed. And I got sicker and more violent. And I spent more time locked in a psych ward. But I got to the other side. Nine days after being off of the antidepressants, the voices went away. <laughs> By some miracle, I did not end up being the weird aunt living in the back room at my mom's house. I'm one of the lucky ones, really, because I only spent two and a half years locked inside this iatrogenic illness. But I think about how it started. I think about ovarian cysts. I think about how this talk is only 12 minutes long and how most patients don't even get to spend 12 minutes with their primary care doctor. I think about the people who walked into a doctor's office today because they couldn't sleep last night, or they had back pain, or they're sad, or shy, or lonely, or grieving, or have PMS, or are basically just human, and how maybe they walked out with a prescription for Paxil. It terrifies me. What do you think we should do? Thank you.